Welcome to video 5 in the Jiprock DIY series. In this video we'll show you how to measure, cut and install cornice just like the professionals. Cornice is used to cover the junction between the ceilings and walls and to add a decorative element to your room. It's adhered to the wall and ceiling using Jiprock corner cement and held in place with temporary nails while the compound sets. Jiprock has a wide range of cornice profiles to choose from. To see which profile suits your style, take a look at the interactive cornice visualizer at jiprock.com.au forward slash my visualizer. We're going to demonstrate using both Cove and Aria. Lengths of cornice can be tricky to move around by yourself, so it's a good idea to have a helper for this project. And as for all DIY projects, we recommend you have safety glasses, gloves and a dust mask handy. You could also consider hearing protection if you'll be working in a loud environment. Here's what you'll need to get started. Jiprock Corner Cement, which is available in a fast setting dry powder in a few different setting times, or in a slower drying pre-mixed formula. A tape measure and pencil. A small bucket and clean water for mixing if using the dry corner cement. Jiprock Mitre Master for cove cornice or a mitre box for any cornice profile. A fine tooth saw, 38mm broad knife, cornice tool, hammer and nails, water and a sponge for cleaning up. It's always best to check your measurements before you start cutting your cornice. Accurately measure your wall length at the top of the wall for each length of cornice. You might like to write the measurement on the wall that you're going to cover with cornice. While you're there, also mark a guideline on the wall at a distance from the corner equal to the size of the cornice. For example, 75mm for aria cornice to make sure the cornice is aligned properly when you put it into place. Always try to use a single length of cornice for each wall, but if it's unavoidable, lengths can be joined together as a butt joint. Cutting cornice angles can be a bit tricky, but if you follow these simple steps, you'll have fewer problems. It's a great idea to have a few practice cuts before you get started. If you're using Jiprock Cove Cornice, you can use a little gadget called the Jiprock Mitre Master to make the job easy. A Mitre Master can be used for all Jiprock Cove Cornice profiles, from 55mm to 90mm, and the instructions on the side show which side to cut along and which side is waste. The waste parts are shown in grey. There are some differences in cutting internal and external mitres that you need to be careful of. With internal mitres, the edge of the cornice along the ceiling is shorter than the edge along the wall. For external mitres, it's the ceiling edge length that's longer. Let's take a look at internal mitres first. When you're marking up for cutting your cornice, you'll always be marking the wall length, and it's important to know at all times which cornice edge is which. So it's a good idea to mark the edges near where you're going to cut. You can even put a rough diagonal mark in the direction you know the mitre will be cut. We'll start with the left side of an internal angle mitre. Place the mitre master so that the indentations rest on the edge of the cornice, making sure that the apex is on the ceiling edge. For the left side of a mitre we cut away the waste on the right side of the apex. Remember that the ceiling edge is shorter. Holding the mitre master firmly in place without bending the wings, cut through the cornice, keeping the face of your saw flat against the mitre master. With the first cut done, you can now mark your wall length on the wall edge of the cornice and cut your next mitre. This time it will be the right side of an internal angle mitre. Again with the apex of the mitre master on the ceiling edge, we will be cutting the waist away from the left of the apex so that the ceiling edge is shorter. You may find it less awkward to cut from the other side of the cornice, which is okay as long as the apex is on the ceiling edge and you are cutting along the correct side of the mitre master. External angle mitres are just as easy, but you need to remember that now the wall edge length is shorter. We'll start with the left side of an external angle mitre. For this, We'll cut along the left side of the mitre master and this time we're cutting away the piece we want to keep. Again, you may choose to move your position to make it easier to cut. Just make sure you're using the correct side of the mitre master. For the right side of an external angle mitre, use the right side of the mitre master. Remembering that the piece you cut away is the piece you'll be keeping. 
If you're using a cornice profile other than Cove, you'll need to use a cornice mitre box which can be used to cut any Giprock cornice profile. A cornice mitre box has packers at the base to cater for 55, 75 and 90 mm cornice. If you're using a standard mitre box, make sure that your cornice sits at right angles to the base and side. The main thing to remember is that the sealing edge is always placed along the bottom of the mitre box. This is because your cutting length marks are always on the wall edge and need to be aligned with the mitre box guides at the top for accurate sawing. Here we're cutting the left side of an internal angle mitre using Giprock Aria, a 75mm profile cornice. Simply cut the appropriate angle that results in the sealing edge being shorter. Change the direction of your cut for the right side of an internal angle mitre. For external angle mitres, the wall length is the shorter length, so cut the mitre accordingly. Once your corners lengths are cut, it's a good idea to check that the lengths and corner cuts are right before you start applying any adhesive. If you're using a dry Giprock corner cement, mix with water as per the instructions on the pack to give a smooth, creamy consistency. Once it's mixed, the corner cement working life is around 60 minutes, so only mix what you think you can use in that time. Working on one piece at a time, and starting with the shorter lengths, butter the cornice by applying a 10mm thick bead of corner cement to the back of each edge using a broad knife. Using the guideline that you marked on the wall, push the cornice into place firmly. This will hold in place while you lightly tap in a few nails along the bottom and top edges of the cornice to hold it in place while the cement completely sets. Using the broad knife and cornice tool, immediately clean off any excess cement. Repeat this process with the rest of your cornice lengths, making sure you apply cornice cement to the mitres and any butt joints. Once your lengths are in place, Clean down with a damp sponge, being careful not to saturate the paper face of the cornice or plasterboard. Allow to set for at least two hours before removing the nails and lightly sanding excess compound of the junctions. If any of the nail holes are still visible, you may need to fill, sponge and sand these again. If you've chosen to square set your ceiling instead of installing cornice and your plasterboard has been installed to suit, take a look at videos 3 and 4 and download the Giprock Residential Installation Guide from giprock.com.au for full installation instructions. So at the end of this fifth video, you've seen how to plan your project, how to handle, measure and cut plasterboard, how to install ceilings and walls, how to set joints, and now how to install Giprock Cornice. Video six will show you the final step in the process, how to sand your joints ready for painting or decoration. It also has some handy hints and some troubleshooting tips, so it's well worth a look.